Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and today we're going to be doing the end-to-end, -end, uh, basically from Spark to Dremio uh, Nessie setup, since we in the last video we set up Nessie and Spark and tested it out and saw that it was working just fine. Now we're going to take it to the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do is, again, you do need to make sure you have Dremio set up. So if you haven't downloaded the Dremio image, which is this image right here, so make sure you download that image and create a container. This one's pretty straightforward. You would just basically, I mean, actually, let me turn on my, I already have a container running, but let me just first show you how to start yours. So you would just hit play here. Make sure you map all the ports. So three, one, zero, one, zero, three, two, oh, one, zero, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 90, 47. No environmental variables should be needed. And then that should be it. I'm gonna get mine started. Okay, so that way that's ready for later. Okay, and now first let's go do the Spark job. Okay, so, oops, wrong window. Okay, so what we're going to do is, in the container already, there should be some, in the sample data folder, there's this workers co-op CSV that's about workers co-op data in New York City. So what we want to do is ingest this into an iceberg table. So I'm going to show you one example of doing this. Um, but the idea is you could use Spark to ingest that any data from any file or anywhere into an iceberg table, which you can then go do analytics in Dremio. That's sort of the point of this exercise. Um, okay, so basically what we do is we go back to our main folder, go back to our iceberg lake housing folder. Let's create a new container, uh, Python. We'll call it iceberg ingest. Let me turn off the caps locks. Okay, again, all the code you can find in the GitHub repository, linked to in the video description. Okay, so let me get you the, the code. And basically this should be pretty much as familiar from the previous video, as far as like just configuring our Nessie catalog, okay, for our Spark session. Okay, then we start our Spark session, so we're off to the races. So what we're going to do first is we're going to read that part. We get the parquet files path. So again, it's, it's one folder up down in the sample data folder. There's that CSV folder. We then use Spark to read the CSV file and we tell it that, hey, the header should meaning the top row is the actual names of the columns. Because not all CSV files have that header row. So I'm saying, hey, yes, this time it does have that header row. And then I give it the file, pass it the, the file path. Okay, the variable. Even though it says parquet file path, but it's really just file path. So I'm going to change that so that way it doesn't to not confuse. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a view from that so that way I can access it in SQL. Okay. So from this, I'm creating a, a, a view of that data frame that we just created from the CSV file. Okay. And then using that view, I can create a table. Now in this case, I don't want, I could just copy the table and do a create table as with all the records that would do the job. But I want to, what I also want to do is show you what Nessie can do with branching. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to make a empty copy of the table, just so that way the table has a matching schema. So to do that, I do Nessie, I take, I take, um, I create a new table called Nessie.worker co-op as the result of querying the table with no, but limiting no records. So limit zero means it's going to be no records. I'm literally just copying the schema and creating a new table with a matching schema. So Theoretically, what you'd want to do, um, with the way to take advantage of Nessie is to take advantage of its branching capabilities for data quality. So essentially what you would do is that when you're going to ingest new data, you don't ingest it directly into the table. You would create a branch. Okay, so in this case, I'm creating a branch called dev. Okay, although it looks, just looks like it might be freezing a little bit. Yep, my browser looks like it may have frozen. I will pause this and I will unfreeze it. Okay, should be unfrozen now. Okay, so basically, where was I? Okay, again, we basically created an empty shell of the table, but now we're creating a branch. And the idea is that anything I do in the branch doesn't affect the main branch. So the idea is that usually what happens is that when you have your querying system, so let's say you're using Dremio the query, by default, it's going to query the main branch. So generally, everyone's queries are going to hit this main branch, and the data there is essentially your production data. But with Nessie, we can create a branch and say, hey, let's let's do our work on new data there because we don't want to expose it to everybody else until we know that the data is good. So I would create a branch. 
And then I would switch to that branch using this use reference query, which basically says, hey, let me switch to this branch in the same way you would with Git. And then I can do my changes to the data. So in this, in this case, what I do is I do an insert select statement to in inject all the records from that CSV file, because it's still a view, into the table. Except now I'm doing it in the dev branch. Okay. Now what's going to happen is then I'm going to query the table so you can see that all the records were injected. And then I'm going to switch back to the main branch. And then we're going to query the main branch so you can see that none of the records are there yet. So even though it's the same table, you see a different thing depending which branch you're in. Okay, and that's the beauty of it. So basically none of my end users are going to see this data that I just ingested until I validated it and merged it in. Okay, this usually would require me to create like a staging table and then I have to basically create another copy of the whole table, validate it, and then do a merge. You know, oftentimes you would do this in much more crazy machinations or you'd only be able to do this in a place like a data warehouse. But with Nessie and Iceberg put together, you can do this all from your data lake house, which is nice. Okay, so again, the idea of this whole world of getting all that data warehouse functionality on the data lake and not needing another whole system where you have to make a whole other copy of your data. Okay, so then we'll merge the branch, okay? So let's run this. So I'm gonna run it, give it a second for the Spark to go do its thing. So there's the Spark, Spark's getting all set up and configured. And then in a second, it'll run all the queries. So there we go, Spark's trying to run. And it's gonna do it. There it goes. Okay, it has almost there, still doing the work. Okay, created the table. It has switched branches. Okay, so there we queried it. So we switched branches and we see that there's the data. But you see that when I went back and I queried it from switching back to the main branch, the table was empty. Then we did the merge, but just to verify that the merge worked, what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to switch to the main branch a second time just to be extra sure that this worked. So I'm switching to the main branch a second time and I'm running that query again, that show query or the, the basically give me all the data query. So when I run that, see now all the data is in the main branch. So the point being is that using Nessie, I can isolate um, changes to the data on a branch I could theoretically do a bunch of validation logic and like use things like great expectations and other tools to validate the quality of the data before I actually do the merge. Okay. So then after we do that, now I should be able to go connect Dremio. Okay. And again, I can verify that the data has been added. So I can go over here to Minio, go to my warehouse and there we can see worker co-op. Okay. So worker co-op was added. I should see multiple metadata files. So I see one, two, two metadata files make sense. One for creating the table and then one for injecting the records. So we see that both transactions are accounted for. Okay, and then if I go back over here, I can see that the data files are there. There's the parquet file with all the records. Okay, awesome. So now that basically the next step would be to go load this data into Dremio or connect it to Dremio. So again, if you set up the container and you connected the ports, you should be able to access Dremio from localhost 9047. If it's your first time connecting to Dremio, it's gonna ask you to set up your, your username and stuff. I've already connected to Dremio before, although it wants me to log in now. Uh, Alex said, yeah, yeah, good. Okay, it's, this is from uh, the earlier Minio lessons. Since I turned off all my containers and restarted my containers, the IP address of Minio has changed since I last did this. That's why it's saying that. So just so you know, in case you run into that, it's probably because your Minio IP address changed if you're shutting and turning off your containers a lot. Okay, I'm not gonna really worry about that right now. So in this case, what we wanna do is add Nessie as a source. So we're connecting Nessie as our source. Okay, so we're gonna say, hey, this is our Nessie source because we're connecting our Nessie catalog. So first I need to go tell it where to find the catalog. Okay, so that's gonna be that IP address. The authentication is gonna be none, so we can just click that, so that's pretty easy. Okay, now again, just referring to my blog, just remember exactly how I wanna type that in there. Right over here, okay, I do use HTTP. So in that case, I can just copy that right over from my, my, my notebook, because I already have that right over here. The only difference is that Spark is gonna be using the V1 
the Spark library uses the V1 of the API, while Dremio is going to use the newer version of the Nest API. So you have to change that to V2. So this is going to connect, that's all you need to connect to the actual catalog. Because again, this is, ours has no authentication. We didn't set up any authentication. So none for Nessie. But Nessie also needs to have access to our Minio storage because that's where the files are. Okay. So the second tab here is going to allow us to put in our credentials. So in this case, um, it's just basically like setting up Minio as an individual source. So I would just put my access key as admin, password. So it's just basically the Minio credentials. Okay, I want to kind of kickstart it in the warehouse bucket because that's where we put our stuff. And then we send we set up these connection properties, which are going to be FS uh, path style access, which needs to be set to true. We need to set the endpoint, which the endpoint I'm going to go grab from my notebook because it has to be the Minio endpoint. So that would be what I used here as the AWS S3 endpoint, but without the HTTP. That's important. Okay, so in that case... I'm just putting that right in here like that. And then the dermio.s3.compat property. Okay, and I'm setting that to true. That's just making sure that it can talk to a non-S3 storage. I could also use S3 as my storage layer if I wanted to. Okay, so again, you could just use Nessie with S3, and this becomes a little bit simpler. And again, I don't want to encrypt the connection because none of this is secure. Let me make sure that there's none of that there. Okay, good. Storage, good. Okay, so then we should be good to go. Again, there's advanced options if I want to like play with this more, but we should be good to go. So I hit save. Okay, and there we can see that I've connected to my Nessie storage and I can see all my tables. Like see, there's a worker co-op table and I can use Dremio to run a query on it. Okay, so it's gonna go run that query and there you go. I can now begin you know, curating views on this table um, and creating my semantic layer to distribute to all my users. So see, there's all the data. And uh, yeah, I can start querying it, creating views. So if you haven't seen how I do that, go watch my using SQL with Dremio uh, playlist on this channel. Um, but yeah, that's as simple as it is. Basically, we could go, so theoretically, only thing you would do differently is that instead of from a CSV file, or maybe from a CSV file, you might connect to an SQL database, um, pull the data, put it into an iceberg table, and then you connect, and then you, if you use Nessie, you can do that data validation on a branch, and then you can connect to Dremio and distribute the data that way. And then you create user accounts for your users, and they can easily see all the data here. And you've now provided them an easy way, easy way to access the data, and you've brought the data from where it's from. Okay, so when you're using Iceberg and Dremio and Nessie, data engineering can be really powerful and not as painful as, as it sometimes can be. And it can be easier than this, but this gives you a pretty good feel for the idea. And again, it can also get really more complicated because when you start thinking about all the validations you want to be talking about a lot more different data sets than just one table and having to kind of write all those jobs and just all that data and making sure that all of it happens and orchestrated all to happen in the right times and right order, it can get more complicated, but this should give you an idea of basically the end goal, basically take the data from the source, ingest it into your iceberg catalog as iceberg tables, and then you can use Dremio to then curate that semantic layer, which they can then feed VI dashboards, reporting, etc. And you've done the job. Okay, so my name is Alex Merced. I'll see you all later on. Have a great day and enjoy.